Welcome to another bonus edition of Upon Further Review. Upon Further Review! And in this edition, we'll be talking about the Tennessee Titans at the Cincinnati Bengals. This week three matchup is happening on September 21st at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can catch that on your local CBS affiliate. So the Titans are coming off of a tough loss to the Cowboys as they went down 26-10 after having won 26-10 in Kansas City in week one. And the Bengals are 2-0 and after beating the Baltimore Ravens 23-16 to and then an impressive victory over the Atlanta Falcons as they beat them 24-10. to So first on the road in Baltimore and then at home against Atlanta and this one is in Cincinnati. So the Titans have their work cut out for them as the Bengals are really one of the best teams in their home as they were 8-0 and during the regular season in Cincinnati in 2013. And they look to continue that trend as they are definitely the front runners in the AFC North. Of course, A.J. Green is questionable for this game. Not sure at this time whether he will be playing or not on Sunday. Either way, I still give it to the Bengals. Without A.J. Green, though, they're going to have to rely on Giovanni Bernard in that running game. But they actually run the ball more than they pass. They actually run the ball about 10 times more than they pass the ball. So they do rely on that running game. Of course, they are a very defensive-minded team. And they, out, they play that game of possession. And they get up early. They And they play games tight if they have to. And then they have those deep strikes to the receivers like A.J. Green. But they have other receivers as well, even without A.J. Green, whether he can play or not. They're actually very talented at that receiving position. They, they always have been, really. If you look at the Bengals throughout the years, they usually have at least a few good receivers, at least two really good receivers, and sometimes as many as four or five. So they might not be the best receiving core the Bengals have had, but they are actually definitely very talented at the position. And if A.J. Green can't play against Tennessee, they should not miss them too much. Of course, they don't want to see him out for too long, and they got New England coming up in week five after the bye. That's going to be on Sunday night, and we'll talk more about that in the future, but hopefully he's back for that game, and the bye should help that out. That might be a good reason to rest him in this game anyway with the bye week coming up next week. Why not let him get the rest and then the bye, come back fully healthy to the Patriots. But first, though, they got to concentrate on the Titans because you can't lose sight and overlook a team like Tennessee. They went into KC and they beat the Chiefs, albeit the Chiefs were banged up. They actually got exposed, though, against Dallas. It's Tony Romo, after looking horrible in week one against the Niners, he was just abysmal. He comes out against Tennessee and has a really good day. And all of a sudden, people are singing his praises. And now the Titans, you got to wonder, are they going to be able to stop Andy Dalton, even if he doesn't have A.J. Green? Well, we'll see. And with the, how balanced today's attack is, I really wouldn't be surprised to see Giovanni Bernard put up 100 plus yards, get in the end zone, possibly a couple times. And Dalton might throw a few as well. Of course, I expect him to be targeting the, the tight ends a little more, possibly without AJ out there. But even as it is, you're going to be seeing the different receivers, you know, getting in and getting their catches and getting looks. You know, Brandon Tate is uh, pretty talented, so I expect to see Brandon Tate. You know, get some more looks. So far, he's only got five receptions for 69 yards. But uh, without AJ Green, if he's not there, he might actually play. You never know. I mean, uh, guys play all the time, hurt. So as it was, we've seen guys put up some spectacular performances already this season while they were a little banged up. Uh, Antonio Gates, just in name one, he was banged up going in that game against Seattle, caught three touchdowns. So, A.J. Green, maybe he comes in and has a big game. Don't be surprised. But either way, I think Bernard, he's going to be the key for the Bengals and their defense. And for Tennessee, if they want to have any chance in this game, they're going to have to get the production out of their running game. They've got a few runners there, you know, with Sean Green, Dexter McCluster, and the rookie Bishop Sankey. they got to get Bishop more involved. You know, he's, you know lower down on the depth chart of course 
you know, he's behind Green, but get Sankey in there some more, get him some more touches. You know, McCluster's pretty good coming out of the backfield and passing situations, so it's good to have a guy like that for sure. But they're going to have to have production from those guys, and they don't really give them many touches. If you look so far this season, they've got almost 20 less. They've got 16 less rushing plays than passing plays. And so if you're having to pass the ball, part of that is when you're behind, as they were to the Cowboys, you can't really run the ball. you got to pass the ball. But even so, you got to run the ball. I know the league has become a very pass-happy league. It's all about the passing game. If you want to be successful, defense and running still wins championships. The you know, and look at the Super Bowl. You had the best passing attack ever against a defense and a running game, and who won? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. In this game, though, Tennessee is going to really have their work cut out for them. And what's more likely to happen, at least in my opinion, is that Cincinnati wins this game, and it's only a matter of by how much. Maybe it's a tight game, or maybe the Bengals win this one by, like, a blowout. I mean, don't be surprised to see the Bengals win this one by, like, 40 points. Like, maybe 35. You know, don't want to get too crazy, but they, they've been known to do that at home, run it up on a team, and this is very possible right here against the Titans that they could do that. Of course, if uh, this turns into a running game, if they're both just, you know, run the ball, then it could be a close game. If Tennessee can get that running game going, it's going to be tough against that Bengals defense because the Bengals defense, although I had not really spent much time talking about them in this upon a further review, they really are the stars of this team. Like, it's all about their defense. That's why they won the AFC North last year. That's why they're going to win the AFC North this year. That's why they're going to win a playoff game this year. It's because of their defense. They'll host another playoff game. This time they're going to win it. So, and it's going to be that defense. And just top to bottom, these guys are loaded. And they're really, they're one of the most overlooked, underrated defenses in the league. Even by myself, I'm guilty of that as well. So, I'm telling you, I'm giving them their credit and their respect for sure. And... Cincinnati Bengals, in my opinion, win this game easy. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm interested to hear some of your opinions. Thank you very much for listening. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we bring you videos almost daily.